What's going on, everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Raking Profit, and over down below in the corner, we got my main man. What's up, guys? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler. We're here in the house. What's going on? So today we're going to be talking about 10 hot selling items that you can sell and that we sell on a regular basis on eBay and Amazon. So uh, Bonafide, what, Bonafide, why don't you introduce yourself to the couple of people who may or may not know you? What's going on, guys? My name is Chris, also known as the Bonafide Hustler on a part-time basis. I am flipping things that I find from thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, putting it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and a consignment store in town. So I'm also one of the owners, co-owners of the Green Room University, which we'll be discussing a little bit later. Yeah, so uh, you know, I've been reselling on eBay and Amazon, and I started with Craigslist about five years ago. You know, before that, I was working at pizzerias, restaurants, uh, delivering pizzas, all different types of places. So you know, I've been doing this for a while, and over time, you learn what items sell best, what are the top selling items for you. And again, it could differ based upon where you live. Each you know, each location is going to have its own little um, opportunities. But Chris, how long have you been in the game? You know, reselling. I've been in the game for about 12 years. That's right. You heard it right. 12 years. And I still resell to this day. It's a lot of fun. In fact, this morning I was shooting pictures in my garage, about 15 eBay items that'll find their way on eBay in the next couple of days. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I started it out uh, originally as a loophole. Like I was working corporate, you know, a corporate job and uh, part-time basis. I was just kind of going out there and making really, really good money. In fact, my first year I hustled part-time, which was only like 10 hours a week, maybe less, I actually cranked out $12,500 in year one just doing wow. reselling. Yeah, just doing reselling on the side of my corporate job. Isn't that crazy? So anyways, and then year two, I ended up making like 27, I think, or something like 27 grand doing part-time this. So the stuff that we're going to be talking about today are easy to find items. In fact, we have 100 of them. We're not going to go through 100 today. We're going to go through 10 of them. And uh, these are going to be you know, items that you should be looking for at a you know, thrift store, a garage sale, a yard sale. And uh, it's important to start learning what we call bread and butter items. What is bread and butter, Raken? These are items that you can find on a regular basis. They're not like super duper hard, rare items like a you know, leather Versace jacket. The bread and butter, you could find them, thrift stores, garage sales, pretty regularly, pretty easy. And they sell pretty nice. They have a good market. Right. So... What else is going on, Raken? We're gonna get into the number one or the rest yeah, of the show. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna dive right into it. Um, you know, I want to shout a couple people out before we we get into it because there's a lot of awesome comments coming in. We got my main man CT Whale in the house. We got Kristen Frank saying, "Hey guys from Saddlebrook." We got Twenty Seven Zach saying hello from Pittsburgh. Man, we got people from all over the place right now. We got Jen Texas who uh, we were actually just talking about before the show. Looks like you guys are gonna possibly get on a collaboration, right? That's right. Maybe you're right along. We'll see. We got Grand eBay, Lifestyle, Profits, Nightwing. So we got about 95 people so far. So let's let's actually get right into it. Um, before we get into it, I did want to mention because people were asking in my previous uh, live stream about the Green Room and the, the Black Friday sale. If you check the first link down below in the description, we actually have a really awesome sale that's going on for Literally, I think it's going to last about six. It's going to end the 26th. So it's open for like a week or so. Um, so check that out. It's a great opportunity for you to get in. But we'll talk about the green room after what it is because I know there's a lot of people excited about it. But let us uh, let me do a screen share, Chris, and we'll get into these items and uh, help some people to start making some money. That's right. So let me – And these items, by the way, guys, are directly from this 100 Amazing Items to Resell Guide. Okay, so – if you're wondering like, um, you know, what we're talking about, if you can see my little screen down there, 100 amazing items to resell. We're going through 10 of these items today, all right? So can you see my screen right now? Let me let me just double check. Oh yeah, eBay screen, right? Okay, cool. You want to want to jump into this first item right here? I know you're excited about these, man, cuz you talk about them all the time. Yeah, you know, I actually want to give a shout out to uh, an original admin back in the day that we had with the green room. His name was Yong. In fact, he was the one that kind of turned me on to these. But uh, right here we have what's, what are called Z coil shoes, if you can see the screen. And Z coil shoes are uh, more of like an orthopedic kind of treatment type shoe, as, as I know. But, you know, when you hustle these kind of items, you really don't need to know everything about them. You just need to know really good keywords, how to spot them, and what the real kind of checkup is uh, when you see these things. But one of the easiest ways to spot 
spot a Z coil shoe is think of a coil like a spring and underneath the shoe on the back part of it there'll be a spring all right a spring that goes down to a pad so as you can see in those pictures right there the average selling price of a Z coil shoe is really between 50 and like 120 bucks I mean that most of the shoes that you're gonna see on completed eBay auctions are gonna be between 50 and 120 bucks I haven't even sell I have not sold a pair of Z coils less than 50 bucks. And in fact, my last pair that I bought for $3 from a Savers, I think maybe it was four bucks, four bucks from a Savers, ended up selling for $79.99. Wow. There was nothing really that special about them, but you want to be looking at those shoes. I've honestly never found a pair that had excessive wear. It seems like the people wear them for a while and they get their you know foot back in working order and then they just get back to normal shoes again. So yeah, there's some black ones, there's some brown ones, uh, they even make some sandal ones. And the most co common one that you're going to find out there it's just a plain white one, right? So Reagan's showing you the black one right there. And those are sold for, you know, $85.99, right? So when you find these at a garage sale for three bucks or a dollar or two bucks, or if you go to a, even a Savers and you find it for 10 bucks, you can still make really good money on Z coil shoes. And uh, that's definitely one of the bread and butter items. I've, I seem to find a pair of Z coil shoes at least once every two months. So yeah, those are real Next good, Reagan. Awesome, man. Yeah, appreciate you sharing that. The next item that I actually wanted to talk about because I hear a lot of people, you know, they want to get started selling on eBay. This is definitely an eBay item right here. Um, and the Z coils, that was an eBay item as well, Chris. Yeah, that's a really good eBay item. You wouldn't really want to sell them into Amazon unless you're ungated and you have them new in a box. So shoes are an awesome item, but I've noticed in my area, shoes are a little more uh, expensive to buy. And some people don't have five to ten dollars to spend on a regular basis so a great item to be on the lookout for if you want to get started flipping items i'm talking items that are easy to ship lightweight very inexpensive to purchase you could buy them in lots if you have any like goodwill weigh and pays in your area you can get these things for eight fifteen twenty cents and what we're talking about are men's ties right here and when it comes to any type of clothing items or accessories a lot of the value is going to be derived based on the brand so as you can see, there's a lot of various brands that sell for good money. Uh, here's a popular brand called, which is a very hard to come across brand. You're probably not going to find that often, but I flipped a couple for a hundred. Um, we've got Zegna, we've got Chanel. Um, as you go down, there's a lot of various brands that sell. Briani, a very high-end Italian brand. Etro Milano, another high-end Italian brand. Really what you want to look for is the brand. Turnbull and Ass are another high-end brand. Not easy to find. But you can find Brooks Brothers, you can find Ralph Lauren, you can find various brands that are actually somewhat easy. Actually, a lot of these that I'm showing you are actually pretty challenging to find. It's like this one seller selling like all of them. But um, yeah, be on the lookout for ties, cheap, easy to ship, good good ROI. I mean, imagine picking up something for a dollar, Chris, and flipping it for 25, 30 bucks and only having to spend $3 shipping. So definitely good money with uh, ties. Study your brands and uh, be on the lookout for them. Yeah, ties are really good, especially a Vineyard Vines one, huh? <laughs> um, oh, man. Oh, I love that brand. <laughs> it's a good brand. So uh, item number three, guys, from our 100 amazing items to resell. Not In no particular order. We're just kind of going through 10 random items in that guide. You can go get it down below. at the, uh, Anyway, there's a link down below to get this guide if you want it for free. Outside of that, yeah, let's fair. go to this third item real quick. And it's uh, basically vintage boom boxes. Now you might be thinking, okay, I know I know to pick all these up and all that kind of stuff. But you know, I bet you didn't know that uh, it's mostly really the gray and colored steel front ones that sell really well. In fact, if you were to take just a plain black one or a gray one that's like Sony and it's pretty chunky and stuff, you know, those those can sell, but the, the shipping is pretty atrocious on those things. And sometimes they sit around. But the boom, the boom boxes that you kind of really want to look for are a little bit more slender type ones or the smaller ones that are very interesting colors like red or they might be a yellow one or something like that. So think of a little bit more slender type boom boxes. Uh, great brands are things like Fisher and Sharp. Um, you have, uh, not Symphonic, there's another brand that's really good as well. Um, uh, it eludes me at this point, some GE ones. Um, but you can see right here that, you know, the average selling price of these boom boxes is all over the place. And you're going to definitely want to test the tape player and if it doesn't work it's okay it's not like you know all hope is lost you can 
definitely sell broken boom boxes on eBay, no problem. So um, you can see that those that are in the picture right now, those are a little bit more of the, the smaller slender ones, right? As opposed to the really big fat ones that are about you know 10 inches deep or something like that. So he's just looking at a random you know vintage Panasonic one sold for three hundred dollars. Wow. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and this thing is not that big. That's what's you know you can see the tape player and you can kind of you know derive the the size just from looking at the tape player, but you see that yellow one on the top that he just went past and that was a seventy five dollar one, and that was a Sony one, right? That's like an all weather one kind of. Those are common. So, yeah, yeah, those Somewhere. are a little bit more Not common. Like you can, yeah, yeah with that. But you can, you know, you can definitely look around for this one. This is a Sony Sports one, and you know the the keys on this one have rubber have rubberized. Uh, kind of things around them. So this is, you know, water resistant, not waterproof, but this one right here sold for 75 bucks. I've flipped a couple of these before all day, but uh, Sony is a good brand as well. Um, one of the ones that I really like a lot is are the Sony Explode, E-X-P-L-O-Ds. Anyways, mm. if you've come around, and they're usually red. So anyways, but vintage boom boxes are really, really neat. Um, I tend to go for the little bit smaller and more slender ones. And if it doesn't work, guys, it's not game over. Just remember that. Awesome. A lot of people are actually enjoying this. They're uh, they're complimenting the video. So we're glad you guys are actually enjoying the content and everything. We got resellers domain saying, I just sold a vintage Sony yellow boom box, quick sale. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for the bright colored ones. They definitely, they're out there. They're not going to, you know, be sitting there all the time, but you know, garage sales, I found them thrift stores. So definitely be on the lookout. Uh, item number four that I want to share with the 142 people watching live, which we definitely appreciate that. Be sure to hit that like button if you guys are enjoying it. Uh, leather jackets. Chris, man, what are your thoughts on leather jackets? Have you have you sold leather jackets? Do you man, I have sold so many leather jackets. It's ridiculous. And I like, you know, leather jackets that, you know, I even have a couple in the inventory right now. Uh, some of them are even Wilson's, right? Some very common brands, but I, got, I like those. I like cafe racer leather jackets. I like actual motorcycle leather racing jackets. I like... Um, how do I say it? Bomber jackets, right? Goat skin bomber Ooh. jackets, really cool. Some with a sheepskin interior, like even better. Uh, Avarex, like all kinds of interesting brands. But when people think leather jackets, they might think of those just real dull black ones, right? And that's not what we're really talking about. We're talking about ones that um, could be a little bit more tougher, like bomber style, cafe racer style, like motorcycle style, things with tons of zippers, right? I love Harleys, um, man. I, I yeah. love the Harley Davidson ones with the embroideries. I actually sold one. It was a, um, I want to say it was a was it a 40th or a 50th anniversary or I don't know, it was some type of anniversary embroidered leather jacket and it sold for, I think it was like over $300. I paid a hundred at the thrift store. They, they had the price jacked up, but there's so many deals out there. Even I was, I was just showcasing an LL bean like Chris, like you can sell certain items like leather jackets within like mediocre brands, like American Eagle, Aeropostale, like those brands, if you find leather, Oh yeah. It's just it's just like kind of high end, you know what I mean? They're expensive in the stores. Absolutely. And on your screen right now there's a brand that I love even more than Harley Davidson, I'll tell you right now. It's a brand called Shot. It's sitting there on the right. I love oh, that brand. I've it flipped, is so I have flipped a nice. decent amount. Great brand to look for if you're in a thrift store, you see anything that's made by Shot and it's leather, boom. Whew. You are in the money fast for sure. And they're out there too. I've I've definitely found them. Um number 5, this is an item that Chris, you know, he's made quite a few videos about in his YouTube videos. Um, if you're not following Chris, uh, the other guy on video with me, that's the Bonafide Hustler. Be sure to go over on YouTube, subscribe to him. He's got a lot of videos uh, about crawlers and crawler bodies. But Chris, why don't you talk to people about, well, first of all, why why crawler bodies? Like most people are probably thinking these are just kids' toys. They're junk, you know? like. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And before we get to that part, I want you to uh, not make it plural, but make it body, crawler body, and hit that same search button. You'll see what happens. Even more will pop up. So anyways, but yeah, crawler body essentially is the top uh, part, plastic part of a very, very cheap radio controlled car that was typically wow. sold by Kmarts and Targets and uh, a bunch of other random places. But the thing is, in, in, in radio controlled hobby scape, there are, uh, you know, consumer grade radio controlled things that you can find at Toys R Us and Target and places like that. And then there are really, really expensive crawlers made by uh, companies, you know, like Axial or Traxxas and they cost like 500 bucks. The problem is these radio controlled crawler things that go over rocks and they're really fun. They have really 
crappy plastic bodies on top. So a lot of people in the hobby opt for a stronger plastic body to protect all their internals of the crawler. So they go to this other market, right, which is on eBay, and it shows you the consumer grade uh, market, which has really hard plastic bodies from really cheap crawlers, actually. But the plastic bodies are heavily, heavily sought after. So what Raken is looking at are just basically, a, you know, a crawler body. This is a Tamiya Pajero meal top uh, sold for 108. But if you back up and you take a look at things like from brands like are very common, like Nico or New Bright, you'll see that the crawler bodies, especially the Jeep ones at the top, they'll always be sitting at the top will be the Jeep ones. And they're really easy to find and surprisingly easy to find. A new bright raw crawler, one-tenth Jeep Wrangler Rubicon body right there. You can see that that one sold for around 90 or something, 79.95. You know, and that's 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 the whole crawler, right? The person I guarantee you when they get this is just gonna unscrew that top body off and put it on their really, really amazing crawler rig. Cause and this is what you're seeing in this picture is something that you can find at a savers for like two to five bucks, like at mm -hmm. best, like that's it, right? And you just take, and you don't even need to send that entire, uh, you know, thing in. You just unscrew that body, the top part, and then that's what you ship in. That's what you put on eBay. If you take a look at those top ones, look how many are actual just bodies just sitting there. If you look at the top Crazy. listings. It's just the body, right? No one cares about the wheels or anything. They just want the top part. And that's the hard plastic shell that people are looking for. So it's like a major hack on eBay. And if you want to make big money and kind of, you know, put ammo in your brain to like what to look for at a garage sale or a thrift store, a crawler body is such a sleeper type thing to look for that you can make you like a hundred bucks, like no problem. Nobody's business. Look at all those completed things on eBay that <laughs> Reagan's looking at. That's a really awesome item right there. Someone was asking, Chris, uh, Ann was asking, do you need the remote? No, you don't need the remote. You just need the body. Unscrew the body from the main car and then throw that on eBay, take some measurements. But you really want to ha find bodies that are around 19 to 24 inches. That's the sweet spot. So if you're at a saver, see if you can get a little ruler out somewhere, 19 to 24, 25 inches. And that's just the body alone. Unscrew the four screws, throw that thing on eBay, and you'll be surprised. Now, guys, if that was an awesome content, I don't know what is. That is that's really cool right there. Um, item number six that I want to talk about, and I know Chris is gonna have some stuff to say about this as well, are electric pencil sharpeners. Now, the funny thing is, I actually just recently found this exact one. It was a different color. Um, and I paid five dollars at a garage sale for it. Uh, Chris, what's your experience with you know vintage pencil sharpeners such as, you know, Panasonic. Um, obviously, there's the Boston pencil sharpeners that are very common as well. Um, have you flipped any? Do you like to buy them? Um, are you on the lookout for them? Or, or what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm absolutely on the lookout for these. And these are one of those kind of items that you can definitely put on eBay and you can really put them on Amazon as well. Yeah, you'd be thinking, you know, pencil sharpeners that must have a really high rank on Amazon. And actually, that's not true. A lot of pencil sharpeners that are electric uh, that you plug into a wall. You can look up the model number under them and put them on Amazon. You'll fetch easily, you know, what seems to be twenty to thirty dollars more than an eBay price. You can just throw them right into FBA. But anyways, uh, common brands are like Panasonic. Um, you know, if you're talking super vintage, like um, the, the ones that we're talking about right now are the ones that you plug in. So let's just make that clarification right now. And you can see these sold things on uh, eBay right there. Great sold prices for some of these, but if it has a model number Solid. and um, you can look that thing up on uh, Amazon and you will find ranks that are unbelievable, ranks in the 200s, like 300s, things you would never think would be there for a pencil sharpener, but people are still using them. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't have to be an expert in some of these fields, but if you can at least identify, like when it comes to pencil sharpeners, like I don't know all the brands, but I know if it looks old, if it looks interesting, like I'm going to look it up and you know, you don't have to be an expert. That's one thing I want to get across. If you have a cell phone and you have the eBay app on you, what do you do, Chris, when you find something you're not familiar with? You just type it in, right? Yeah, you type it in. But if it has to do with these electric pencil sharpeners, honestly, I just flip the thing over. I take a look at the model number. It might be like a KP310 or, K, you know, one of these kind of like model numbers. You just take that model number, put it into Amazon. And if you're cleared for FBA or even merchant fulfilled, I mean, you can get definitely a premium on Amazon for that thing. Um, and that's all it takes because you'd be very surprised. Like I said, the rank is extremely low. These things are fast sellers. They really are. Let's dive into uh, item number seven, which um, is tripods, right? A tripod is an item that you uh, use to set your camera on to take, you know, photography or videos or different things like that. Um, I use them in my YouTube channel time to time. I know, Chris, you like to use them as well. Um, 
what do you look for in terms of of tripods? Are you looking for quality? Are you looking for brand? Are you looking for um, a bunch of different things? What What are your thoughts on tripods? You know, I like I love hustling tripods because they're easy, but I really like to stick with certain brands more than anything. Now, some of these certain brands could be like a Sunpack or it could be, uh, you know, Manfrotto, Bogen or Bogen, Bogen, Manfrotto. The thing with tripods that you want to kind of consider and remember is that really good tripods are going to have model numbers on them and really, really, really good tripods are going to be heavily customizable, meaning you can you know, buy a tripod base and then you can get any kind of head that you want. The head being the very top of the tripod and the head on really good tripods or the kinds that people will bring, you know, and use with photography will typically be two things. There'll be what's called a three-way pan tilt head. It's pretty interesting looking. And there'll be one, if you can find the ones that look like they have like a trigger, like a hand trigger on them, those are mm. typically called a ball head. And ball head ones are worth good coin as well. But if you just remember this one brand, Manfrotto Bogen, and they have model numbers for both the head and the base. So you can flip yep. these things on Craigslist. You can flip them on eBay. Um, all you got to do is just show, you know, make sure it, when you have a tripod in your hand, you want to extend the legs out and all that kind of stuff. If it has a three-way pan tilt head, you want to test it out a little bit. And if it has a ball head with a trigger function on it, just squeeze the trigger and release it at any part of the ball and see if it holds in that position. It's really easy to test this stuff out. And um, some of the times you're going to find them without the uh, the plate, and that's okay too. People, you know, in in real photography, people that are expert photographers are just going to find the plate online anywhere. So. Um, really good things to, uh, I would definitely even say that the local market, it's probably where you want to move the thing first, but, uh, you'll know a good tripod because it'll weigh a good amount versus a really cheap Ambico, like crappy tripod, um, that has a, you know, pan tilt head. So three way pan tilt head, you know, grip for the, uh, ball kind of thing or Manfrotto Bogen. Uh, just remember there's a head and there's a base to these tripods and, uh, they have numbers to them. I flipped a, uh, a Manfrotto once, um, Bojan. I, that's how you pronounce it, right? Bojan. I think it's Bogan or Bojan. It's one of the, it's one of the two. Yeah. Either way. And I actually decided to, to split up the, the, the head from the, from the actual tripod oh, you really, itself. You did that? Cool. I, I did just because it, it, it just wasn't like, I was able to make more money when I looked at the sole listings that way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a great tip right there. A number eight, the eighth item that we want to talk about that you can flip on either eBay or Amazon. And the reason I say eBay or Amazon when it comes to board games is because certain board games are actually going to be restricted on Amazon. So you're going to have to put them on eBay. But for the most part, I love selling board games on Amazon, brand new board games. Um, there are a lot of board games that are pre-owned that are going to sell for a ton of money on eBay, I mean, for example, Pokemon, the, the Master Trainer board game. This is a very uh, interesting game that sells really, really well if it's complete um, on eBay. I mean, there's literally hundreds. I mean, here we have Spirit Island that sold for best offer under 80 bucks. You know, one thing I like to look for, Chris, when it comes to board games are vintage board games that are like Milton Bradley from like the 80s or the early 90s. Uh, a lot of them are worth really good money, especially like the strategy games or the action games. If it has like a crazy cover and you're just like, that looks insane. Like a lot of them go for good money. And um, speaking of items that go for good money, I actually found this exact game at a garage sale one time for $5. And the game is Dark Tower. And it was actually complete. And I think I sold it for, I want to say it was $300, two or $300 I sold it for. Uh, a five dollar pickup. So um, definitely, if you find older vintage Milton Bradley games, look them up. Again, I'm not an expert when it comes to it, but that's the cool thing about this reselling game. You don't have to necessarily be a, an expert, but you you just need to recognize value. Um, but in general, like I said, brand new board games. You know, like for example, I've got a Walking Dead board game that I found the other day that sells for forty dollars. I paid I think five or six dollars at Savers. Um, just scan them, you know, get the Amazon seller app on your phone, which is a application that allows you to scan barcodes and scan away, scan your heart away. There's a lot of board games that, I mean, Chris, you scan board games, right? How it's pretty easy to find 30, 40, $50 board games. They're like out there everywhere. Oh, absolutely. Especially if they're sealed. You're, if, if you're sealed and it's a decent board game, even if it's a themed Monopoly or Operation or Trivial Pursuit or something like that, typically that game is going to be right above 30 bucks or more. Um, but the board games, you know, one of the best things about board games, unlike puzzles, for example, is that puzzles, you have to count and you have to like build it, right? A board game, the the, the booklet, like the leaflet booklet where it has the rules and the regulations, all that kind of stuff, the, the first page will have 
contents of box, right? And you just count the pieces. You just yep. count to see if you have everything that you need. And it's really easy to do. You could do it in under like, you know, usually 10 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, so I think it's a really, really good uh, kind of a hack, especially when you go to garage sales. Like no one ever thinks to premium price their board games in a garage sale. So uh, it's a great place to get really dirt cheap board games, honestly. This game sells crazy on eBay used. It's Hero Quest. Have you ever found that game? I never I have. have. I have found it. Yes, and no I No way. I, I did. I did. I found it and I think Eric <laughs> was with me, the college picker. But anyways, I I did find it. It was in my neighborhood. I remember the house and everything. I bought it for a dollar. My Hero Quest sold for I think a hundred. And it was completely incomplete too. That's the crazy part, right? It was incomplete, hundred bucks. I actually found this game that's on the screen right now at a garage sale. I forgot where I was. I think I was like a couple towns over. I was with my mother. We were going like on an out of, out of town thrift trip and uh, we came across a garage sale and I didn't know anything about this game. It's, it's called, uh, well, I think it's called just dream phone and uh, it just looked really, really weird. I saw that it was Milton Bradley. I saw it was old and I did what you said. I found the little slip with the, with the contents and I made sure it was all there. I want to say I sold this for like $120 on Amazon at the time. Um, and, and that's the thing about Amazon. You can actually usually get a lot more money on Amazon versus eBay. Uh, but you just got to be careful. Make sure all the all the pieces are there. But literally, there's probably 200, 300 board games just like this that sell for like $50 to $100 used. So uh, be on the lookout. Next item I want to share with you guys, and Chris is really going to dive into it because he knows a lot about this stuff right here. Uh, coming from Austin, Texas, he's a freaking diehard fan of like REI, and he loves being outdoors. Um, sleeping bags, right? Like people probably like the average person probably just passes up a sleeping bag thinking there's no value in it. But what are your thoughts on sleeping bags, Chris? Is there money to be made? Yeah. Uh, sleeping bags are very interesting. If you can remember one thing from sleeping bags is get really get excited when you hear, when you see the word down and the higher the down content of the sleeping bag, the more excited you should get. Majority of sleeping bags are going to be, you know, 80% down or 90% down. But when it starts getting close to a hundred, even 90, honestly, majority of awesome sleeping bags are at 90% down feathers. Um, you definitely want to look at awesome brands like REI and you want to look at uh, North Face and Mountain Hardware and um, things like that, Big Agnes. Um, mm. But uh, strong brands are part of the puzzle. Another part of the puzzle is just to try to find ones that really, that the ones that are command really high money, they actually look like sarcophagus type things, meaning like mummy type things. You know, those <laughs> things that the, the mummies go into, they look yeah, just yeah. like that with a tiny little hole at the top, right? Uh, <laughs> the ones that look like mummy bags, like true mummy bags. And the funny thing is sleeping bags are also called mummy bags, but Kinda the like ones this, that have right? a smaller hole. Yeah, like exactly like right, right there, a marmot one right there. Let's see how much that one sold for. What does it, uh, what does it say? What? 180. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. So that's something that you can find in a garage sale for typically like sometimes 10 or 20 bucks. It, it just depends. But um, yeah, you want to look at you know things like that. You want to find down ones. Sometimes there are ones that are with Primaloft, which is a uh, synthetic material that when it gets wet, it still stays expanded and it still keeps you warm. But uh, sleeping bags are really interesting. They're heavily compressible. And a lot of times you can, you can flip a sleeping bag locally. Like the last one that I flipped was like, what, three months ago? And I met the guy outside of my gym. It was a $1 sleeping bag that I sold for 50 50 bucks in a gym parking lot of all places. Awesome, man. That That's definitely getting people excited right there. So great tips um, on those sleeping bags, Chris. Uh, the next item I want to share, and this is actually the last item out of the, the 10 items we're going to share with you guys, are blank media. Blank media. Now, it's funny because I was actually at the thrift store the other day with a friend of mine, and I had found um, – it was like a set of like seven or eight blank VHS tapes. It was Sony. And uh, my friend was like, why are you buying those? Like nobody watches VHS. Like who, who would be interested in that? To be honest with you, I didn't know what to say besides the fact that don't try to fight the market. The market wants what the market wants. And the market wants new sealed blank VHS. If you find certain brands, right? You know, the, the Maxwell's, the Sony's, uh, the Panasonic's. There's a lot of different brands. Again, the common theme here. You don't have to be an expert, but you do need to recognize if you find sealed media, right? And I'm talking like sealed VHS. I'm talking like the blank media right now. Uh, there's definitely a lot of other ways to make money with media. Scan it. Get your barcode scanner out, the Amazon seller app or FBA scan, whatever you're using, and just scan it on Amazon. And the cool thing is a lot of these sell just as well on eBay. Like usually there's like a big, sometimes a big price gap between eBay and Amazon, but uh, these blank media items, I don't know who's buying them all. Chris, maybe you can shed some light on it, but I've sold, you know, packs of four or five for 30, 40, 50 bucks. I've sold packs of 10 for 70 to 80. I mean, it's ridiculous what some of these blank media items will actually fetch. What are your thoughts on that, Chris? 
You know, it's funny you ask because about uh, 10 days ago, I actually sent blank media into Amazon. It was VHS tapes. And in fact, it said 10 pack on the outside and it was wrapped, but there was only really eight tapes in there. So I was like, well, I really can't put this on. I could put it on eBay, but honestly, you, I scanned one tape and the net profit on one tape or what it was going to, the check it was going to cut out for me was $3 and like 70 cents. So for the dollar, eight pack of tapes that I had in my hands, I split all eight up and I sent eight with eight stickers into Amazon. And, uh, you know, you just do the math, but eight times about four bucks a piece, you know, that's 32 bucks right there. And I spent a dollar and these things were ranked like less than 50, less than 50 rank. Think about it, Steve. I mean, that's crazy. That's, that's like, that's insane. Yeah. So, um, but I think a lot of people might not even know that Amazon sells those things and they just resort to eBay because it's vintage. It's, it's already like a, out of date kind of thing. So they're going to eBay just to look for some more tapes for their VCR. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. So um, the money's out there. You guys just got to go out there and get it. Like Chris said earlier, thrift stores, garage sales. There's obviously flea markets. There's Facebook groups that you can search, local buy and sell Facebook groups. Um, what else am I missing, Chris? Where are some other places that folks can source some of these items? Yeah, there's like a billion places. Like, you know, if you're in the, if you're in the UK, car boot sales, yeah, Craigslist, you can even type in VHS tape, VHS tapes, right? Plural, right? And see if there's any discrepancy or see if anyone's selling these brick type tapes. Typically when I find these things, honestly, it's typically at a garage sale, right? Somebody just went to DVDs and they don't care about their VCR anymore. And they got all these tapes. And if you find more higher biased tapes or tapes that can go up to 180 minutes or something like that, a little bit more, uh, a little bit past what a normal tape can go, those things fetch really good premiums. The funny thing is, when it comes to VHS tapes, you can apply the exact same rationale to audio cassettes. So there's your bonus. There's your number 11 right there. If you go audio cassettes sealed and they're like metal bias, pff, gold, absolute gold right there. And you know, this is what we're all about, guys. I mean, this is why we have our YouTube channels. This is why we started the green room because the money's out there. But the thing is, a lot of people, they kind of get caught up. They have different things that are holding them back, whether it's, you know, what to buy or how to ship items or they have questions like go out there and make it happen, build relationships, network, get into Facebook groups, get into the YouTube comments, ask questions, build relationships. It is so key. I mean, when you started, Chris, what was the biggest thing that really helped you to get started and get you moving in the right direction? I mean, I'm going to guess it was just taking action. You know, it was taking action, but honestly, I gravitated towards things that were fun. Anybody that has followed my story, you know, with my YouTube channel, which started five years ago, knows that I started with bikes. But that was just something I was really energetic about and I knew a lot about. And from there, I had to self-teach myself. I had to, you know, self-teach myself all these other things. And it took a lot of time. And that, that part wasn't the most glorious part of my journey, but it was part of my journey. This is because I learned about YouTube way later, right? Um, and I can honestly say that... Just getting on YouTube and watching videos, free videos, incrementally made me more money. But getting around like-minded individuals and hosting meetups, doing ride-alongs with people in the hot seat, I mean, that's really where the exponential thing started happening. Is where And getting around people like Eric, the college picker, I mean, just smart people. And a lot of these smart people, they don't even have YouTube presences sometimes. Like they're just there and they're resellers around America, but they have no way of really talking to each other. So we built the green room as one of the lead benefits of the green room is to get these people to talk to each other instead of being lost in a group that's 50,000 big on Facebook, for example, right? We have a nice, small, quaint group and people there, it's heavily moderated. So people, you know, are not afraid to post what they want to post and put some really good stuff out there and to really congratulate each other when people find some of these amazing items out in the wild. But the best part is, uh, you know, even myself as an expert, every day I learn in the green room. I, I look at pictures, I'm very visual and I look at things and I'm like, wow, like, why can't I find that? You know, but I'm, it's because I didn't know about it sometimes, you know? And uh, so anyway, so that's one of the, the, the huge benefits of the room right there is to pair up with like-minded individuals that aren't afraid to post great content, but they don't like fluff. And I like that and because the fluff is where people get lost. Like the fluff is what kills most people's motivation. It kills most people like trying to look for good nuggets of information in some of these really, really big Facebook groups. It's really hard to do, you know, it really is. So I like quaint and heavily moderated kind of things. And uh, that's what we built the green room as, you know, a quaint and heavily moderated group. 
We got a guy who's in the green room. His name is uh, Craig Morris, and he actually just put out a post. I think it was from today where he had mentioned that he had like no inventory in his Amazon um, recently, and he's been pushing hard again lately because he's – I think he's working a job now, and he's doing other things. And did you see his numbers that he posted? I think he did. He just crossed $100,000 for the month, and he's been posting pictures of him and his daughter and like the UPS truck always coming and picking up all the boxes. And it just goes to prove right there. There's just one example like – you don't have to be full time to make really, really good money with reselling. And if you network, if you connect with other people, right, whether it's in the green room or it's in a free group or it's YouTube, if you take what other people are doing and you model it and you and you put in hard work, I mean, this is a great business to to get into eBay and Amazon. I love it. And you know, I was saying the other day too, if it wasn't for YouTube, if it wasn't for the green room, for the networking. I could honestly say, Chris, I would still be working at a nine to five job. I guarantee it because I don't know. Some people are more like self-motivated and can kind of get a business started on their own and learn on their own. And they just, they don't mind failing, failing, failing over and over again without guidance. But for me, the community aspect is the biggest thing. Like that would be my biggest advice for anybody starting any business, whether it's the stock market or anything like get around like-minded people. Yeah, definitely get around like-minded people that uh, want to head in the right direction. And it's okay, you know, like in the green room, we have people talking about their families and, you know, the sometimes reselling has its struggles, right? It's pretty clear. Um, but one of the things that reselling definitely has is a is kind of like that sense of loneliness, right? Because you can tell your family oh. members, like, look what I did. And I sold this, I bought it for this, and I sold it for that. And they're like, that's great. But then the conversation kind of ends right there, right? And um, it's tough, right? So, you know, typical people when they work a nine to five, they're like in a cubicle next to somebody or they got someone to talk to or a support team or something like that. When you're a reseller out there, a lot of times if you're a beginner or an intermediate, there's no support team, right? There's no one to really brag about like, oh my God, look, I found no one to go garage selling with. And so we definitely wanted to build something that uh, alleviated all that to make people not feel lost and feel good and to put a room right there on Facebook to where they can actually, you know, like talk to each other, talk to each other, even though, and a lot of people, the funny thing is have met each other in real life because of the green room. And I think that's really good is the fact that they've bridged these gaps that originally were kind of like walls, right? Being lonely is kind of a wall. It really is uh, self-motivation. It's kind of a wall. But when you have other people trying to pick you up and trying to explain things to you, or you might see a picture in the green room, you go, well, why can't I do that? Like, I'm no different, you know? Or this person's in a town four hours from, four hours away, and they're doing this. Like, why can't I do that? Right? So that's what the green room is all about. It's about sharing and caring and uh, definitely us, you know, helping that whole process move forward. You know what I'm curious about? I'm curious if there's any green room members in the house right now. We have oh, they're in their house. People. <laughs> if oh, they're in the house, what do they have to do? I mean, do they have to start knocking at the door? How do we know that they're in the house? Oh, they're in the house because I've seen them in here. Uh, but you just put GR. If you're from the green room and you are a member, but just put GR down below. I would just love to see it, honestly. But uh, it's a fun place to be. Um, we are in the fifth, no, third, fourth year of business now. Fourth year. Because we established ourselves in December 2014. And uh, we're in the fourth year of business. Oh, well, okay. Third, three and a half. But yeah. It's been a lot of fun and the meetups are unbelievable. And uh, we've, we've hosted meetups. I'm, I'm not even kidding where we'll get to a thrift store and there'll be like 20 of us outside and sometimes 30 and the doors will open and like the members will just fly in there. And then you spend the rest, you know, the next 30 minutes, like going to everyone's pile and seeing what people are buying. And like, that's just one of the better parts of the green room, obviously, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you can learn at a crazy pace when you're there live, like watching it happen. It's a lot of fun. It really is. You know, really the GRs. Too. see the all the GRs. Coming there's a up. lot. There's a lot of GRs, man, coming through. And we just had a hundred likes. So thank you, everybody. Uh, another fun thing about the uh, the green room meetups is, you know, obviously there's there's context to the meetup. I've done meetups and it's kind of awkward at times because nobody knows each other. But the green room really does feel like family. So when you meet up with everybody, like everyone's kind of cool and comfortable. But one funny thing is when you sometimes when we'll blast through the doors, the employees, they'll just like looking at each other like, are we getting hijacked? <laughs> like what's what's happening? Like, like it's just it's just so freaking funny. Um, there was a comment that came in from I'm trying to find it. Where is it? It was from Axel saying, well, he was essentially saying, thank you, guys. You helped make me. It was if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be making extra cash. So, I see you know, we definitely appreciate that. And um you know, I can say right now, if it wasn't for the green room, for YouTube, other content creators, I wouldn't have been making any cash as well. I mean, I know, Chris, you started 12 years ago, so you had to learn a lot on your own. Um, but when I came in the game, I actually learned a lot from Chris. I mean, Chris, the guy on the screen with me, he's the one who initially got me started with bicycles. And I remember just posting in your Facebook page like, hey, should I buy this 
Cannondale for eight dollars, and you're like, dude, pull the trigger. And I, I just didn't <laughs> know. So I mean, I would say the green room is for the beginner and the intermediate. If you're an expert, if you've been in the game for ten years, five years. I would say the green room probably isn't for you. We definitely cater it more towards beginners and intermediates. And I think it's because we have just such a passion for, for helping people to start making that first $500, that first thousand dollars, getting started with eBay, learning what items to flip Amazon. I mean, do you want to touch on that, Chris? Yeah, that's one of those places where we want we might get, we want to make it as comfortable as possible for any beginner or intermediate to come in and have some fun. But even if you're an expert and you want to get around like-minded, you know, expert resellers, there are plenty of those in the room, honestly. But uh, we really, you know, our focus is really for the beginner and intermediate. And it's a lot of fun. Like uh, it's a lot of fun because not only, it's not all always about reselling. We even have an, another group outside of the green room called the Green Room Life, and so where people post pictures of all the things that really excite them behind the scenes, uh, whether they be food or fitness or you know what they're doing on the weekends a lot of times it's food and fitness weight and it's weight loss yes yeah, transformations but we have a, pl a place called green room life which i think as of this morning had like 372 members in it and our uh, original our normal green room group has about close to 900 880 or so like so you can kind of see like half of our green room you know membership is sitting in green room life and they talk to each other there and it's all the stuff that you guys want to talk about outside of reselling you know that might not be part of the original discussion but you still like to talk about it so we have a group for that as well and it's a lot of fun i post all kinds of workout things in there um Raken posts his uh, smoothies workout journey picks and all this it's a safe place for everyone we would never allow you know uh, someone to feel threatened or worried or anything like that. So we definitely moderate it. We, 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 you know, try to do a really good job moderating the group because that's what a premium group should be. It should be heavily moderated and it should be really, you know, have the content curated towards learning, honestly. So, so some people are asking what the green room is. It's, it's a Facebook group and it's a website as well. And then obviously we have like outside events and meetups and different things like that. So like on the website, we have, free books and courses that we've created. So like a lot of my clothing books um, are free. A lot of Chris's guides are free in there as well. We have a bunch of different things that are that are free in there. We have discounts on different guides and different um, tools and softwares and different things like that. We also have private shows that you never see on YouTube. They just go into the uh, Green Room University website. We also have something called a uh, Bolo section where we have about 30 videos that are all centered around various bolos that we've picked up and we've sold and other members have picked up in the Facebook group. So um, that's one of the things that a lot of the new members really appreciate most because, I mean, I still remember Chris going into a thrift store, right? I literally, I would walk into the Salvation Army and I would look for one clothing brand. It starts with a P. <laughs> Guess what it is? Uh, was it Pendleton? I don't know. what. It yes, was it? it was a Pendleton. I would walk in and I would only look for Pendleton because when I started three years ago, there was a there was a woman called it was I think it was Autumn's Upscale Resale or something like that. She had a video and I watched it and I just went to all the thrift stores looking for Pendleton. But I was passing on the Patagonias, I was passing on the Woolrich, I was passing on the Briani. I didn't know. So I mean, we created that on the website to kind of help people to get started. Um, to start, you know, because sometimes we kind of get like we feel like people just automatically know, but you have to start somewhere and learn. So. You know, that's a great thing about the green room. And um, I'm curious, I want to know in the comment section, I want to know when you first started going to the thrift store or the garage sale, what was that one item that you were looking for, right? I know, Chris, it was bicycles, right? Uh, when I went to the thrift stores at first, it was bicycles and it was still shoes, honestly, like shoes and jackets. Really? I, I know my jackets and I know my shoes, but I, I was doing that. Of course, I knew my video games as well, so I did that. Um, I think early in the game, about 10 years ago, I was still messing around with luggage, um, but yeah, I mean, in, my, my mind and what I stored up here from all the shows and hanging around with awesome people in the green room, I mean, I must know thousands of items by now, you know, so I make videos, of course, everyone pretty much knows my videos and I go around sourcing and I'm not looking for just one thing anymore. I'm looking for thousands of items out there and that's what makes it comfortable and fun for me. If you ever watch my ride alongs, you're like, oh, you guys seem like fun guys. Not, you know, we're, we're fun people to hang around with, but it's, we're fun because we're chill but we're chill because there's no pressure anymore. Like we really know a lot of things. And when we go out there, thrifting, you know, being a hustler is fun now. It's not like mm -hmm. I have to go out and make money. It's not a ha I have to, it's I want to go out because I know I'm probably going to, you know, miss out on a $500 day or a thousand dollar day pretty quickly. <laughs> How many times, Steve, have you gone to a savers and just spent an hour? Maybe you popped into one or two before going home and that savers made you a hundred to $300, for example, right? That's not All uncommon, you know?
And a lot of people think too, they feel the pressure that they have to find 20, 30, 40 items. That's not the case at all. Like, like for example, I found like brand new in a box, like Yahtzee games that go for like 80 bucks on freaking Amazon. Like you don't have to, like we, we just went to the thrift store yesterday, my mother and I, and she found, I think she's, she found a book that sold for 25 and then she found this pair of headphones. I don't remember. It was kind of like an off brand. It was like as seen on TV, one of those thingamajiggies. But it was brand new headphones in the in the package with like a thousand reviews. It only had like a three point eight review, uh, eight three point eight star. So it wasn't like the the highest quality thing in the world. But it was something for ninety bucks for like an eight hundred rank in electronics. And I'm like, that's like sixty dollars profit like all day long. Like my mother, she actually just retired. It was her last day the other day, and she would go to work all day long for for eight hours and maybe make a hundred dollars or less. And she's able to go into thrift stores and make 50 to 100 bucks within an hour or so. You know, sometimes you flop, right? Like, Chris, we've gone out thrifting. Sometimes you don't find anything. But there's times where you find three, four, five hundred dollars $500 worth of profit in one shot. And it's just like, wow, like, it's just cool. It's cool for full-time, and it's also cool for a side hustle as well if you're working a full-time job. There's actually a lot of members in the green room who are uh, working part-time, full-time jobs and – actually hustle on the side and some of them make like really good money. I almost wonder like how in the world, like some of these guys are like crazy. Yeah. One of them we, uh, in particular, his name is Malu. I'll just call him Malu J, but he was on a green room show. It lives in Houston. Okay. So you can imagine there's just competition when it comes to reselling in Houston, lives in Houston, knows a good route, right? Does it, but he works a full-time job, right? But during lunchtime, he goes out to the thrift stores. When he goes home, he passes by some thrift stores. And this guy must, I think what we said on that show is he makes somewhere between 30 and 50 grand extra a year, you know, and, and some of the years have made more than his original salary. And that's just a part-time thing for him. I've actually hustled with him four different times, like in person with him. Um, and he's, he's amazing. He's really, really good at what he does. But it's just to go to show you that that's just one of the members in the room. Has no YouTube presence, by the way, outside of the show that he's been on and the three other ride-alongs that he's been on my channel. No YouTube presence, right? He's just in the room. And he's met up with a bunch of people during meetups. He's been there. So a lot of fun uh, to meet some of these people that you would never know exist out there. We got a question from CT Whale saying, hey, guys, how does one go about taking the steps to joining the green room? So um, I mentioned it earlier in the show, but if you check the first link in the description, we actually have a Black Friday sale that we just started. It's going to be running until the – it's going to end, I think, the 26th. So uh, it's 25% off yearly memberships. And we like rarely run any sales anymore. Uh, we used to run them quite a bit. And now we've kind of cut down a bit because we have a good sized group and we're really trying to take care of them and everything. So this sale is going to be done by the 26th and you're probably not going to see it for a while. So uh, we figured we'd put this out there for uh, for Black Friday and uh, give you guys a chance to get in. So if you want to join the green room, if you kind of like what you've heard with the bolos, the eBooks, the Facebooks, the free courses, the discounts, um, the meetups and, and everything, um, and just the networking, you know, consider joining, right? We do have a monthly option and a yearly option. Uh, but we found that the people who, because we've had a lot of members come, we've had some leave, obviously it's, it's not a fit for everybody, but we've found that the people who really succeed the most, they stick with it. And it's just like anything, right? Like if you start a business, you've got to stick with it a long enough time and have enough patience to learn the ropes because you're going to make mistakes, right? With the green room, without the green room, it's going to take time. You've got to learn systems. You've got to learn what items to buy and sell. So um, we'd recommend the yearly just because that's the highest success rate over the uh, the monthly. But we do have a monthly option as well, which you could check out. But it's the uh, the first link down below. And the code is uh, Black Friday. 2017. So you can check out greenroomuniversity.com as well. Um, we have a question from, actually, it's not a question. It's Boston Best Flip saying, now picking up electronics, board games, collectibles. <laughs> How often have you actually watched a video, Chris, and then found the item like the next day or the next week? Um, that recently happened. I can't remember what it was, but that actually recently happened. It was something I saw actually in the green room. It wasn't a video. It was actually a post. And then I ended up finding the item like soon after. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think one of them was this Margaritaville machine. The very first one I found was, be I think, because Rift of the green battle. room. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was before all that. That was the third one I've ever found. But anyways, it was on the thrift battle. The funny thing is the third one was the best one. Like it was so awesome. But uh, and that one sold locally for $200. So my $40 garage sale find 
turned into 200 bucks. Just one of the many things that I've done. But anyways, uh, the very first one that I found was actually with a Green Room member with Jonathan Cleeter. And he was like, yeah, you should definitely send that into Amazon. I thought about it. I was like, I'll do it. And it was a $14 Margaritaville machine that netted me $169.97 or something like that on Amazon. Just crazy things like that. And it's, you know, not any more than just putting some bubble wrap around it, testing it, flipping a couple of switches. Okay, it works, cool. And then I sent it in. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, we've done this for three, we've done the green room thing for almost four years now. And we've met up with a substantial amount of the members. And the members are nothing short of just stellar people. Now, some of these members will have some YouTube presences, some of them will, but a majority of them don't right? Majority of the ones that actually make it to the meetup that have the energy. And that's one of, one of the things I wanted to echo in real quick. You know how Steve says like, you know, with the green room, without the green room, there's still that whole failure thing, right? But you will fail less, all right? And you will succeed faster, right? When you're around the right people. So it's all about being there, being vocal and getting energy involved going, all right, you know what? I could ask the questions I want to ask today in this room. And I know I'm not going to get any flack for it. Someone's going to help me out or I can comment, right? But that's all energy. That's all action right there. And the more action you take, and that's the reason why we think the yearly membership is definitely a better fit is because you need time to build the friendships and you need time to see how it works. And then once you're in, you figure out how it works. Typically we have a lot of members that go, you know what? this room really bridges that gap. Like it allows me to meet some really key people. If I go traveling to Seattle this weekend, I can put in the green room. Who wants to meet up for garage sales, right? Who wants to go you know, retail arbitrage sourcing till the wee hours of the night? How many people in the garage in the green room do that? They'll go sourcing at Targets and Walmarts till like 10 or midnight, some crazy times, but that's what's fun, right? They're energetic about it. So why not do it, you know? And another cool thing, you know, whether it's with the green room or somewhere else, get a part of a community so you can kind of keep a pulse of what's going on. You know, there's a lot of members in the green room who are actually transitioning over to wholesale uh, and private label as well. So, you know, that's the cool thing about being part of a, a group as well is you get a pulse for like what's going on. Like, for example, a lot of times people will post, hey, you know, this is restricted, right? Or you can't do this or Amazon changed the rule or um, this or that. So, I mean, you've got to stay, you know, things are changing so quickly, right? And, and that's that's what almost in a sense levels out the playing field is things are changing so quickly that even if you're brand new, you might be thinking like, oh, some of these guys have been doing it for two, three, four, five years. But the game's changing so fast that it doesn't really matter how much experience you have. Like you can literally jump in right now and get a slice of the pie. And I've been talking a lot about this, Chris. People think that they need to know it all, that they need to be the best, the quickest, the fastest, most talented. But the thing is, especially if you're living in America right now, there's such an abundance of of inventory, right? And profitable items at thrift stores, garage sales, flea markets. You know, you might be thinking, oh, the bona fide hustler. You might live in Austin, Texas. You might be thinking, oh gosh, the bona fide hustler's out there. Like, how am I ever going to compete with him? Like, this guy's like freaking ripped out of his mind. He's like 40 years old with a set of hair that's like an 18 year old. Like, how does he do it? And it's just like, he can't be everywhere. Like, the next guy can't be everywhere, right? So don't worry so much about the competition. Like, if you trust in the process, right? And you, get into the green room, you go wherever, you take a course, or you just learn on your own and you follow the steps, right? You go to the thrift stores, you go to the garage sales, right? You look up items on the sold listings. Like you do what Chris says, you make sure there's a market. If you trust in the process, Chris, you're gonna get results, isn't that right? Absolutely, you just have to know the process a little bit. You gotta get around the right amount of people that wanna share. Um, I, you know, It's tough to sift through a lot of information, even on YouTube, There's just, to find the gold nuggets that you're looking for, <clears throat> sometimes you have to look really hard. And it's the same thing And you know, when you go to Facebook groups and stuff like that. If you wanna find the nuggets, you're gonna have, to, I really do think that there should, there's a premium associated to it. So we definitely, you know, through a lot of hard work and a lot of brainstorming and conference calls decided you know, the green room was one of those things that we could form, right? And we could bridge that gap for everybody and uh, make the learning curve faster because honestly, we didn't have that, right? And if we had that, my gosh, we would have been so much further down the line as a reseller, but uh, we had to make all the mistakes on our own, pay for those mistakes too. That's the worst part. So if you're thinking like, oh, I can't join monthly or I can't join yearly, yes, that's too much money. Think about all the mistakes you're gonna be making in the next year. Think about how much that's gonna cost, right? Uh, so the question is, how fast do you really want to learn, right? And I really do think that the green room for a beginner and an intermediate is one of the fastest places to be, honestly. Chris, Build a Wall wants to know what app do you use to scan books? Um, the one that I use to scan books will just be a pretty basic Amazon seller app. That's pretty much it. Um, that tied to an account that has either a $1 per listing you know, agreement or a $40 a month thing like I do, um, gets you into that app. And then that app will 
you know, you can even scan books that have no barcodes. Did you know that, Steve? You can scan board games that have no barcodes because it has a scanner built into it. It's not just it's looking for crazy. barcodes. It's got, dude, I was scanning something yesterday. I was scanning an old Dungeons and, Dr Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide. I didn't pop oh, on man. it, but it was $15 for one book. And I was like, I'm going to talk this guy down to 10. It was selling for 35 used on Amazon, <laughs> but this thing had writing all up and down this thing. But it had no barcode. This thing was from back in the 80s, like 1981, right? But I hit the little scanner thing on the book, and it figured out what the book was. And that book was five stars with like 300 uh, reviews or 1,000, something like that. It was some crazy, crazy low amount. It was 65K in books, Steve, by the way. 65K in that's books. That's an seller, man. That's like a week or That's a what day. I'm saying, like, man. Wow. But it had writing inside. But that doesn't matter because that's only that's one idea. of 10 different scenarios that it will unfold for the next times that I find these things out there. So anyways, um, yeah, the Amazon seller app is definitely what you want to have. And for a lot of people too, you know, one of the benefits of being part of a community is you're less intimidated. You know, CT Whale just says, it's getting to the point uh, that I'm not so intimidated by this whole Amazon thing. And you know, when you're by yourself and on your own and you're just watching like random YouTube videos and stuff, like you start to form this perception of the way things are, right? But the honest truth is, if you're not interacting with people who are successful, you really don't have any idea how the things how things really are, right? Like you might be scared of Amazon, you might think the fees are high, you might think this, you might think that. But then you get into a place like the green room and you see people who are making a thousand dollars a week or you know, putting up crazy ridiculous numbers, and you're like, Wow, like they're doing this because they're leveraging their time because you know um, they're able to flip items really quick or like you you never really know until you get in and you talk to people who are successful. You know what I mean? Like people think like I hear this all the time. I'm not going to sell on Amazon. The fees are too high. There's like a million benefits to why I would sell on Amazon, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the fees are high, but you could get the fees might be 20, 30 percent higher, but you're making 20 or 30 percent more. Uh, the fees might be high, but you're able to ship it off to the warehouses, right? Like the fees might be high, but you're able to make money while you're sleeping because everything's just being shipped off from the warehouses. Like you've got to get around people who are succeeding in whatever it is you're looking to do to find out what the truth is really behind it. That's really, I mean, I, I think I'm going to leave it off at that. I don't know if you have any final words of encouragement uh, for the people, but I mean, we got 175 people watching, Chris. What do you got to say, man? Honestly, if uh, first of all, hit the like button. But if you're scared, I'm gonna tell you right now, join. <laughs> all right. If you're scared and you're you're kind of like, oh, maybe I should do this. If you got maybes in your head or you're scared, just do it. All right, and get in there, and uh, you know, like I said, commit some energy to this thing. Right. If if you do one thing right in your life, at least commit energy to anything that you really want to happen in your life. Make actions, simple keystrokes and mouse strokes, even hitting a like button on a post that you might like. That's energy. Like commit energy and action to certain things, comment, you know, put a video up once in a while in the green room. If you're happy about your ride along or your, <clears throat> or your thrift haul, make a video, put it in the green room. Then people start liking it. People go, oh man, you're awesome. Make another one, right? Then you realize, hey, you know what? What goes around comes around. But uh, that's what we uh, really like to do in the green rooms. We want to find those people. We want to find the people that really believe that um, there's definitely a way to uh, circumvent all this loneliness and pain that comes with reselling and like mistakes and stuff like that. There's a way around it all. There really is um, where you can get around a like-minded you know, group of individuals that makes mistakes together, right? But we triumph hard, right? But we'll make those mistakes together and it's not a big deal. When you have 40 people in the same mistake, uh, yesterday I put a post in the green room like, hey guys, having a problem with eBay and the sales, like it's not working for me. A member within one hour, right? Commented, try this instead. I went home, tried it, worked. Like, I was like, dude, that was crazy, man. My own group, I had a question for it. Like, it was really awesome. Like, so anyway, um, yeah, within an hour, it was just like the person told me exactly what to do. And my eBay gripes, frustrations, gone, right? Profitable once again. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. But anyways. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, you know, we want to thank everybody. We, we appreciate everybody watching and liking. And I was just checking the green room. It looks like a bunch of people have already been joining from, from this video as well. So I want to thank everybody. And uh, we'll be sure to be sending you out some welcome emails and everything to get you kind of situated in the room and introducing uh, yourselves to everybody and kind of giving you an idea of how, how everything works. So uh, welcome to all the new members as well. So uh, we, we definitely appreciate you guys. And we're, you know, like, like we've been saying, we're here to serve you, help you, and uh, to get you started making money as soon as possible. It's 2017. It's never been easier now to get started making money online with places like eBay and Amazon, but you got to make sure that you're 
you're following advice from people who know what they're doing, who have already been through the ropes. And uh, that's why we created the green room. And that's why we have these YouTube channels to help you guys out. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Again, if you want to take advantage of this Black Friday deal to join the green room, it's the first link down below. Be sure when you get to the page to use the code Black Friday 2017. Um, we do have a limit in terms of how many people we're letting in. So if the code's dead in a couple of days, um, you might not be able to get in, but we still have a lot of spots open right now. And if you want to join, be sure to join. We'd love to have you in there and we look forward to helping you out. So um, yeah, Chris, thanks for coming on, man. If you haven't subscribed to the Bonafide Hustler on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't already liked this video, do us a big favor, like the video. And uh, we will see you guys in the next video. And I think we have a show Wednesday, a green room show. So uh, it should be exciting as well. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Chris, thanks for coming on, man. See you later, guys. Bye.